Do you have an old power tool that has damaged insulation on the power cord? In this episode of DIY Man, I'm going to show you how to repair this professionally and it'll only cost you about $3 to do it. To repair this power cord today, I'm buying something called heat shrink tubing. I bought this package from Walmart, but you can pick this up at a lot of different places. If the plug on your power cord also needs to be replaced, the easiest way to install this heat shrink is to cut that piece off before you do this. Then you can just reinstall the new plug when you're done. My plug doesn't need to be replaced today, so I'm going to show you how to do this the hard way by opening up your saw. And mine just has a few screws in the handle here holding it together. And on most of these power tools, these wires are installed into switches on the trigger assemblies or the on-off switch. On my trigger assembly, I can see that the switch has extra holes, that way I can just dike these off and reinstall them after I put my heat shrink on. One important thing to remember is where these wires go before you start diking these off. Also, only cut off the wires that go to the power cord. I got carried away and cut off an extra one by accident. Here I'm just removing the last little bits of wiring that's sticking out. I just don't want those to touch anything that they're not supposed to once I reinstall my new wires. Alright, let's go ahead and pull out this heat shrink and repair that insulation. As you can probably tell from this video, this piece of heat shrink is roughly 3 quarters of an inch in diameter. I wish I would have searched a little bit longer and found one that was a little bit bigger. This one was kind of hard to get over my power cord. One thing you have to keep in mind about heat shrink though, is that if you buy heat shrink that's too big, it won't shrink down enough on your power cables. And obviously if it's not snug once it shrinks down, it's not going to really protect your cables too well if it's too loose. Then if it's too tight, you can have trouble installing it like I am here. If it is too tight, you can use pliers and other tools to stretch it out as you need. And oddly enough, it will still shrink down all the way to its intended size after it's been stretched out. Just be careful not to rip or poke holes in this stuff because when you heat it up, it'll actually fall apart. Alright, the struggle is real, I finally got this thing installed here. Now to shrink this stuff down, you can just use a lighter if you want to, but I recommend using a heat gun if you have one. These can help you shrink down the tubing a little bit more evenly. Alright, let's do this. Insulation is repaired, I'll go ahead and strip these wires, that way I can reinstall them. Here I'm just installing these back in the trigger assembly where they need to go. Then I'll just reinstall this trigger assembly and close the saw back up. Let's test this thing out and make sure it doesn't explode when we turn it on. Hey, I'm not as dumb as I look. And now, I don't have to worry about these wires getting damaged when I use my newly acquired skill saw. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, would you hit that like button for me? And don't forget to check out the other great DIY videos I have on this channel. I'll see you next time.